could enter in the printing like those weird color names that are six digits long and start with a ha hash or seven digits. I don't know. But this way is simpler. But I'm just going to make it even more, shake it up and make it random. So I'm just going to say random right here for the red. Now random. So I'm going to name it anything from 0 to 225 because 225 is the maximum value. Then again, I just follow this drill. Random, 225, and random, 225. Good. Okay. Then we have to end this statement again with the outer parentheses and end it with a semicolon, then end the draw function. I mean the class. Okay. So now you can kind of see it flashes. So we're just going to change this to mouse down. So every time they click, I mean mouse pressed, mouse pressed is the function. So then when mouse is pressed, it'll be become a random color. Hmm. Well, that didn't work out. So we'll just run this in the setup and just every time we run the program. I'm sorry I'm a bit shaky. I just learned it in. This is all I've gotten in about a one and a half hours work. So every time we run it now, it's going to be different. That just makes it more interesting. Now, we need a class for rectangles. So we're going to do void now draw again. Now we're just going to define some integers. For some reason, you have to define it twice. I haven't really had the time to solve that problem either. So I'm just going to define an integer. Now I'm going to make this an integer so it's pixels instead of float. So I'm going to name it integer. Then I'm going to name it mouse, except I don't like typing in the E. So now since it's an integer, I'm going to name it an I. Now since it's the X position, I'm going to do X. You can choose it to do it your own way, but that's just the way I like to do it. Okay, now I'm going to equal it as mouse x, which is an exact dynamic value, which is the mouse position in x. Now the reason we do this in draw is if we did it in setup, it would just take the initial position. Then we do the same for y, following the same template pattern. Okay, we're done with those draw settings, so let's just copy these since we're going to define them again in this part too. Okay, so first what we should do is name another class void, and let's name it mouse drag when they're dragging the mouse. Good. Now We'll redefine these variables. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say a rectangle. Now it's nice to do a variable so we don't have to press that annoying shift button. We can just type in the variable. But by all means, if you think it's more convenient, you can just directly use this function. So now a rectangle takes four parameters. First, the mass pos first its coordinates, and second, its length and width. So we're going to name its parameters, its um, mouse x, that's the x, and then mouse y, mouse integer y, that's the y. Now let's just make it 20 by 20. Okay, now let's run our code and see where it's at. So as you drag through, you get a bunch of rectangles. But I personally think white's pretty boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a random fill color. Now, it's the same thing as the background, so I'm just going to copy this code, except name it the fill color for these rectangles. Okay, so now this was a, a, what I was able to figure out from the tutorials, and that was pretty much all. They didn't exactly teach, so don't look for a reference tutorial because you won't find one. 
I just took what I knew from the first two tutorials and tried to create an app similar to Doodle Kids, except I don't have the shapes. But pretty much with the shapes, you just have to somehow, which you'll have to learn to find random shapes, and just then create a bunch of strings and booleans and functions and all this to get random shapes and random colors. So you pretty much get the pattern, and thanks for watching this first tutorial. And I'll see you soon with my Blender one.